Hey guys, it's Sunday. That means it's time for Sundays with Sarah. Today is a very special Sunday, at least for me, because not only is it beautiful here in Chicago for the second day in a row, but it's also the Sunday before what is an epic Taco Tuesday slash Cinco de Mayo. So that's gonna be pretty fabulous. And since, you know, tacos are my jam. Oh wait, that's one thing I wanted to get since no one's really watching it. Even, even if you are, just stare over there for a minute. Cause I'm getting something real important. I wrote this book. You guys, I wrote this. I know. Uh, it came out a couple years ago, but it's still totally relevant. It's got a cool name, Taco Taco Taco. Uh, get your copy right now because we're gonna be cooking from it and I'm gonna be cooking from it this week. So you can get it on Amazon. It'll come to your door. Tip your Amazon person. Uh, all right, so enough about my book, plug there. I'm excited. I know it doesn't look like I'm excited because I just spent four hours in my pantry organizing it. So that's fun. Uh, today, it's all about tortillas and tequila. More about tortillas than tequila, but so I made myself a little festive beverage. Yes, it's, it's four o'clock here, so that's okay, right? I don't need your permission. I'm gonna do it anyway. This is frozen mango mixed with tequila, and that's it. And I haven't even tasted it yet, but it sounds fantastic and refreshing, so I'm just gonna go ahead and taste it. If you've got tequila, cheers. Or if you have something else, cheers. Are you guys, do you guys have, am I the only one? Anyone? Anyone? Is anybody out there, cameraman? There's zero people? Been plenty of people joining. Yeah, I think this live is not quite showing what it, the number. Who cares? We got a handful of people. I'll drink without you. We got Bridget Mac twenty two. Bridget, yeah. We've got Chefline. Okay. We've got all right. Several nineteen eighty nine. We've got images in the city. Kate, all right. I know you guys all have drinks. I know you do. So cheers. Those are my power school fitness friends. All right, way to go. You you earned your tequila today. You probably didn't tune in to watch me drink tequila, but I really want to taste it. It's uh, tequila and frozen mango pureed. So let's see. Um, it's delicious. So highly recommend. Next time you're at the store wearing your mask, go grab yourself uh, some frozen mango, some tequila. That is fantastic. There might be more tequila than mango in there right now. I'm not sure. I might be getting real excited during this whole, whole, whole thing. All right. We're making tortillas. And here's the deal. I have a tortilla recipe in my book and it's good. But since the book has come out, I have kind of been playing with tortillas, reading about them and kind of perfecting my technique. Perfecting, well, you know, whatever. So it starts with these ingredients. I share them with you. We've got whole wheat flour. I have uh, salt and then I have baking powder and I have lard. Did I just say lard? That is lard. Uh, because it makes the best tacos, tortillas. What am I talking about? These are tortillas. Anyway, you can use oil in its place. You can even use coconut oil if you want. Uh, you know, in life, you just, you gotta live a little. You gotta eat the lard sometimes, you know? So that's what I'm saying to you today. So in this bowl with my flour, which I, again, you can use any flour you've got on hand. I'm using whole wheat flour, but if you don't have whole wheat flour, you can totally use an all-purpose flour or some blend of flours. Now, I'm not sure how it would work so well with like a gluten-free flour, but if you have a gluten-free blend that's like an all-purpose flour, it should work about the same as it would with any other. All right, the other thing that might also change is your amount of water. Uh, my amount of water is wrong in my measuring cup. So my assistant, who is also myself, I'm, I'm firing her. She's horrible. Yes, she can't. She can't work here anymore. You guys, my my microwave is down here. Anybody else have that situation? That's pretty fun, huh? All right, pretty convenient too. Great for children to have your microwave low. So while that's warming up, I will note that warm water is actually awesome for making tortillas. It sort of helps bring out and relax some of that gluten that's inside your flour. So a warm water is what I'm looking for. I have been talking so much. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, let's get some action going. Cameraman, can you see? He doesn't talk. He doesn't like the sound of his voice. What, what are our measurements oh. there? What, 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 what do you, okay. how, much, how much flour? What? You can't read my mind? Okay, so this is about two cups of flour. 
hold on, I'm pulling this out so I don't burn my hands off when the water comes out. Two cups of flour, this is three tablespoons of fat. So like I said, this can be oil or it could be lard. I've tried a mixture of butter and lard and that's kind of fun. It don't work so awesome, but tastes tastes pretty amazing. Oh my gosh, look, see, this is what happens when you have too much tequila. Don't do this part yet. Get that out of there. See, this is what helps when you do the fat. Look at that, that's, that's appealing. All right, in there, this is my baking powder. So this is three quarters of a teaspoon of baking powder. I needed to mix the dry stuff first. Yeah. I get so excited about talking that I just, <laughs> just let me loose. All right, and then this is salt, a half teaspoon of salt, and then you can stir it together. So, I mean, I could have done it after, it wouldn't have been a big deal, but I wanted to do it right for you, because I love you, I want it to be right for you. So I'm using my hands. I know, it, they're a great tool. I say it all the time. They're free, they're always available. You know, just keep them clean. All right, so now comes in the fat. All right, we're ready? So if you're using oil, you would just drizzle it over and you could use a fork to sort of bring it all together. But think of this as like pie dough. And think of this as your hands being like the most magical things in the world. You're really just gonna get your hands in there and you're gonna work the flour into the fat like you would if you were making some kind of biscuit, you know? I mean, I'm not from the South, I'm from Indiana, but I never made a single biscuit ever <laughs> until I went to culinary school. How's that? Thanks, Mom. I'm just kidding, love you, Mom. I know she's on here, so. Here's my uh, virtual wave and hug to my mom. All right, so basically you're just working it in until you don't feel any more big clumps. You know, you only have three tablespoons of fat to two cups of flour. So it's not like you're gonna get some like real magical, you know, when you're making like a, a crust or something, they always say you want like pea-sized crumbs. Well, you're, you're not really gonna get that. So don't, don't spend, I guess what I'm trying to tell you is don't spend, you know, half your afternoon working this fat into the flour. Ooh, close up. Now, if only you had like slow mo, slow motion. <laughs> oh, you guys. I wish I could drink some of that tequila. <laughs> Anybody else excited about Tuesday? I mean, I am so pumped. I'm actually going to be on my friend. Her name is Dawn Jackson Blattner. You may have heard of her. I'm going to be on her Instagram live on Tuesday talking about tacos. Apparently, that's. All I do, and that's fine. I actually do a lot of stuff, but you know, I like tacos, so it works. I'm still going. You guys know I'm like obsessive. So even though I said don't spend all afternoon doing this, here I am, still doing it. But that's just because I want to show you for reals how long it takes. And plus, we've got a few minutes. You're you're fine. Okay, and it's looking good. I don't know if you can see now, but it kind of does look like you went to the beach and you picked up this beautiful sand. Don't don't use don't use sand. Okay, that's that's not gonna work so well. But it just looks like that. All right, I could I could probably do this all day. That's just this. okay, okay, okay. I said okay. I can't, okay, I can't stop. Two thirds cup water. If you're using a whole grain flour, you might need a little bit more water. If you're using an all-purpose flour, you might need a little bit less. And it also depends on your weather. Is it dry? Is it rained recently? So you know, start off kind of on the low end of the water. And if it doesn't seem right, you can always add more. The problem is you can't always take it out, right? So you can always add more. You could use your hands to stir it. You could use a spoon. Um, you will find like, oh no, Sarah, but it's all stuck to my hands. Well, stop being such a pansy. It's gonna be fine. It'll all come off, I promise. I'm just kidding, I love you. You're not a pansy. But you need to not freak out if you're using your hands. Like it's not a big deal, okay? See, cause look, it all just comes off. Isn't that beautiful? It all just comes off. Your freaking out didn't help anything. So I haven't used that full two thirds cup of water yet because I'm still trying to figure out, do I have enough water? And don't worry, I'll explain. Don't worry, I won't leave you hanging about what I'm talking about. So really you just can be in this bowl if you're worried about a mess. Like I never really worried about messes, right cameraman? <laughs> oh, a laugh. Okay, so see, it's a, to me, it's a little dry. It needs just a little bit more moisture. The reason I know that is because my hand comes off it really pretty easily. And you want it to be a little bit tacky, but not sticking to your hands. So then just work a little more dough in. That seems about right to me now. And then you're gonna kind of knead it. 
you're not going to kind of need it. You're going to need it. And kneading is really just picking it up, flipping it over, smashing it down. Pick it up, flip it over, smash it down. And then once you get into a rhythm, it just feels good. Especially if you've got some anger you need to work out or you're just feeling good about life because it's sunny and you're in your kitchen making tortillas from hand. And again, every, I make everything seem like it takes forever because I'm talking the whole time. This does not take that long. So you probably need this for about, I don't know, a minute or two. And really that's just kind of bringing everything together. You're building up some structure so that when you roll these bad boys out, you're gonna have something magical. The more you need it, you'll notice it's gonna to start to get a little firmer, a little stretchier. You might wanna check your heart rate. You might need a sip of beverage at this point. There's a lot of tequila in there. All right, perfect. Okay, again, I'm obsessive. Here I go, I could stop right now, but I just wanna to prove to you, I probably look like a crazy person. I'm like, but whatever. Could you do this in your stand mixer? Totally. Would I recommend that? Nah. Because then you have to wash your stand mixer. All right, so here's what I've got. Just a ball of dough. And it should just kind of be a little bit stretchy and shiny at this point. You guys good? You guys okay? Okay, there we go. Now we're good. Shape this guy into a ball. Put him back in your bowl. Then you're going to grab a towel or a piece of plastic. I actually reuse the same piece of plastic many times. You can do that too. Waste not want want. Want 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 want. Rest it for about 30 minutes. Once you've rested it for 30 minutes, you're gonna, I know it's a different bowl. You're gonna rest it for 30 minutes, and then you're gonna shape it into these cute little balls. Are they cute? All I did was, I didn't measure it either, guys. I just pinched it into balls. And I already ate one, so that's why one's missing. So it should make, this is actually a half recipe, so what do we have? We would have had eight balls, so you would have made 16 tortillas out of these. So once you've got your balls, Keep it, keep it legit, Sarah. Cover them because you don't want them to dry out. And then you're gonna take one guy out, take a little flour. All right, time out. If you have a tortilla press, you can totally use it. Here's what I know. Legit people make it with a rolling pin or something that rolls. They use their hands. You can use the tortilla press, but honestly, every time I use that thing, I get more mad at it. I think it's great for corn tortillas, but I think it's not great for flour tortillas because it never gets thin enough. So that's my next. So you see, oh, it's fun. Flour everywhere. You can feel like the guy in uh, the Muppets, the chef guy. My mom knows who I'm talking about. Thanks for being here, mom. I actually don't really know if you're here, but any questions so far? You guys are like, I'm not sure I care anymore, Sarah. That's fine. Go back and watch it later. <laughs> So this is a French rolling pin. I don't know if you noticed, but it's tapered on each end. I love this type of rolling pin. It gives you a lot more flexibility. The ones with the rollers, I don't know. They're just kind of, they're good for like old school pie making, but they're not great for rolling out edges. So you could also spend forever trying to get like a perfect circle for your tortilla, but you never will. So don't, okay? Watch the wise. No one's perfect. Your tortillas will not be perfect. So stop trying to be perfect, okay? I stopped a long time ago. <laughs> Look how successful I am. I love making myself laugh. Okay, when you roll, it helps to start from the middle and go out. I don't know if you saw me doing that. I like to do it that way. That's what I was taught in culinary school. I felt like that was a legit tip. Always make sure you got a little flour, otherwise it's gonna stick to your rolling pin and you'll be cursing it and me. So you can see, if you want a really good pliable tortilla, you want it to be thin. I don't know, isn't that? And thin is good. While you're rolling these all out, you can roll them all out or you can do one at a time. So while you're rolling this out, you're gonna have your cast iron pan heated up already. And we're gonna travel, watch this filming. You're gonna get like an Emmy. Can you get an Emmy for filming? I don't know. 
I've never watched those shows. It's a high budget production. It, totally. <laughs> okay, you flap that bad boy in there, and if you're if you're full of tequila, you'll get it a little bit on this side, but you won't worry. And you'll watch the bubbles. It's magic. This is gonna take, depending on how long you've preheated your pan. What was in the pan? This is just a cast iron pan. I did have a little bit of oil. I did season it a tiny bit with oil before I put this in here, just so it wouldn't stick. Oh, I guess. It's like magic. And what if there's no, what if you don't have a cast iron pan? What do you have? What do you have? Not, have? not cast iron. <laughs> uh, let me think about that for one minute. Like a skillet. Hmm. Do da da ba ba. Yeah, you could use a skillet. It might stick. Um, my advice is to get a cast iron pan. That's not great advice. Hold on, I'll think about your question in a second. But as you can see, I'm terrible at multitasking. Okay, so note, I have a beautiful towel at the ready, and I will take my tortilla. See, it's still flappy, that's good. I'll put them over here, bye, and wrap them in his, like he's, like he's going on vacation. I'm gonna leave my pan, come back over, we'll talk about your, your pan situation while I roll in another one of these guys. So, really what you need is a heavy pan. Uh, it can be even a pot. So even if you have like a, a really cool old, you know, um, pan that's heavy bottomed. Like a Le Creuset? Yeah, you could totally use that. Uh, you could even use a nonstick pan or, this is some good advice, if you have a baking steel or even like a pizza stone, you can do it in the oven. So that's an idea too. Where's it? Um, and you could do it in a nonstick pan. Just don't turn the heat up so high. You just won't get the same kind of like bubbling and stuff because you can't get such a high consistent heat. So you can make it on anything. It's just your results might be different. That was a good question. It took me about five minutes to figure out how I wanted to answer your question, but I answered it. And you're like, it's kind of. Uh, but honestly, get a cast iron pan. They're like 20 bucks. Best investment you'll ever make. And it's, while you're there, get a tapered rolling pen. Okay, like I said, these are whole wheat tortillas made with lard. I mean, it's like a balance. It's like a beautiful balance. You can fill these bad boys with anything and you can make a bunch and then just store them in the refrigerator. And then if you're not gonna eat them right away, you can store them in the freezer. Just make their, sure they're fully cooled off before you freeze them and separate them with a little bit of parchment paper. And that'll help keep them separate. All right. Any other good questions? Should we talk about tequila? Tacos? When you say lard, you're referring to Crisco or shortening, or is, are those different things? How, how do you see those? Oh, that's a good question. Was that yours, cameraman? That's, yeah, that's cameraman special. <laughs> you were listening today. <laughs> uh, so you can use Crisco and you can use any of those shortenings that you would find in the baking aisle of your store and those will be fine. They're very neutral in flavor, so you won't really taste them, which is a luxury. Uh, lard is the best because it imparts, it, it's still neutral, but it has kind of a better mouth feel. Sometimes lard, or the uh, Crisco's and things like that, you know, they're hydrogenated, so they can have a bit of like a film. That's attractive. Taste, but, uh, and it's not that huge of amount, so you probably won't notice. Again, so just rolling it out really thin. Now, if you like thick, fluffy tortillas, you can do that. I think what's beautiful about cooking is that I'm just giving you some ideas. And if you don't like them, then you can do the, you know, whatever you want with them. That's that's the beauty of cooking. It's, recipes are just ideas. Here we go. You don't have to come with me. I'm gonna come back. Or you can. Oh, hey, look, I got that one right in there. No, I did a good job. Pat myself on the back. All right. Well, I think this is long enough. There's only so much magic I can show you in my kitchen. I know flour is kind of an issue right now. Some people are having trouble getting flour. I would recommend reaching out to a local bakery. I've noticed a lot of bakeries in Chicago are selling flour. So go ahead, reach out to them and see how you can support your local business that way. I think that's awesome. And then search for your local mill. I know Janie's Mill here in the Illinois area has a bunch of flour, so you know, Keeping those places in business is important too, so do what you can. And uh, yeah, 
thanks so much for joining me. I had fun. <laughs> I had fun. <laughs> I hope you did too. Anyway, I love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to put this in my TV. Not this. I'm not going to put this in my TV. I'll put it on my Instagram TV down, down there on your thing. So you can uh, view it over and over and over again and be like, why did I waste my life on that? Just kidding. Cheers to Sunday, to a fabulous week. We're going to do it. And uh, see you Tuesday. <laughs>